Hey guys. All right, <clears throat> I've been making a lot of bags lately and you all have asked me how I'm making them. So I'm gonna show you. So um, the first one that we're gonna do is this sunflower one. These are Dollar Tree placemats. Um, for this bag, you're gonna need five of them. <clears throat> we are going to, for the front and back of the bag, you're going to take one, they're double-sided, so there's sunflowers on one side and green on the other. And we are going to stagger two of the placemats like this, a little bit down from the top, and attach them together. And we're going to do the same thing to another pair of placemats, one for the front, one for the back. So... <clears throat> Let me pin these together, make sure that spacing is the same or close, and get it basted at the bottom, and I'll be right back. Okay, so now they're just basted along the sides, and <clears throat> my goal with this particular bag is to not cut any of the fabric of the placemat so that I have to then surge the edge or line the bag. I don't want to do that. Um, <laughs> so we have this, this is the outside, but we have, if you flip it over, this looks the same. So we have this little extra piece of fabric that we need to do something with. I'm not sure what yet. Um, here is my one more placemat. So for this bag, like I said, you need five and this is gonna be the bag bottom. This is gonna be an open top, top tote bag. I have guesstimated I want it to be this long. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11 and a half inches long. And I think it's originally 18. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, well, 17. So we want it to be 11 and a half inches. So I think I'm going to fake it till you make it. So uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven and a half. I'm going to fold a little bit down on each side, each shorter side. And then I'm going to fold this end up so that we have this for the bottom. So. Do this and go like that. And then we'll do the same thing over here and go like that. And that will be our bottom. So before we do anything else, <clears throat> we need to attach this to this. Um, I'm going to sew up the two short sides and then I'm going to center this on the bag, one of the bag front, well, we'll call this the front. I'm going to center it. I'm going to leave about a quarter an inch, half an inch from each end. Um, I'm going to only sew from this finger to this finger. I'm not going to sew all the way to the edge. That will just make it easier when we turn this to make the bag bottom square. You'll have to just trust me on that. Um, okay, let's get that done. Okay, so what I did is once I sewed the short ed edges on this bottom piece closed, um, I <clears throat> put it underneath this lip right here, just slightly, and then I stitched the whole thing closed all the way down. And what that did was close the hole, but also caught the bag bottom in in that seam. So, okay, cool, that worked. Now we're going to insert something inside. I left the opening over here for the bag bottom because we're gonna insert some stiffener inside of here. Now I have some <clears throat> interfacing ultra firm stabilizer. So I'm gonna cut a piece that fits in here and we're gonna put one or two pieces in before we attach the other side the same way we did this side. I have a ruler 
here next to me. So this is about, uh, let's try the other end where it has the right numbers. So our piece needs to be about five by 11. Have a marker. Lemon. When you're doing these sewing projects, these um, gridded rulers and the gridded mat on my table really come in handy. <clears throat> okay. Scissors. Now we're going to cut that out. And that'll just give some extra stiffness to the bottom of the bag. I usually always add some of the stabilizer or actually a piece of wood if I have a little thin piece of wood. Okay. Needs to be a little thinner. Sewing through this is kind of a challenge, so I would recommend that you cut it just slightly thinner um, than your pocket because then you don't have to sew through it at all or as much. Okay, now we're going to take this other side and we're going to line these up. pin it and then sew it just the same way we did the other side. All the way down this way. All right, I'll be right back. All right, so now it looks like that. Um, the next thing that we want to do is attach these to this bag bottom. But also what I want to do is like fold this, make sure this is going to work. In my brain it does, that doesn't mean it always works in real life. So we're going to do that. Let's overlap the sides and sew them together. And then we're going to sew across here and that'll give us our square bottom. That does look like that'll work. Um, you don't. You want to do this before you get too far because if you get too far into it and something is wrong, then you have to seam rip. I don't know about you, but I hate seam ripping. Okay. So I'm going to sew this down and then we're going to cut some strapping and sew it down before we assemble the rest of the bag. I did when I we got started um, put some pins on the pockets to mark where the fr I wanted the front side to be, which I think is probably a good idea. So let me sew this down. I didn't sew these ed ends down because I think it might be easier to manipulate sewing the two sides together and boxing the corner if these are open and free. But before we do any of that, we need to put straps on here. I usually eyeball it which is probably not the best way to do it. <clears throat> I like about a 16 inch strap handle. 
And I like to put my strapping all the way down one side, around and down and up the other side so that the strapping is a big oval. I think that gives the bag more stability to have it um, be very loaded with stuff, which is, I tend, I tend to load my bags up with stuff. So what I'm gonna do, I also like the seam to like be down here at the bottom somewhere where the two like ends overlap. Okay. Now this is gonna make this big pocket into three pockets. So you'll have two side pockets and one center pocket on each end, which I kind of like. You can put your cell phone in one, you can put a tablet in the other one or a water bottle or something. Okay. Um, Tape measure. <clears throat> okay. Now this um, is co a cotton uh, webbing. I got this from Amazon. I use this kind of um, stuff for all of my bag handles. This is a tote bag, so I'm gonna make the handles a little longer than normal. This is about 24 and a half, 25. So you literally didn't see me measure much because I don't. Okay. So now we'll start pinning. I'm going to fold over this one end or fold under and pin it down. if I can, because there's a lot of layers down here on the bottom. There we go. Use a denim needle on your sewing machine for this. It'll save you a lot of time and headache. So it's about three and a half. So measure from the edge as you're laying out your strapping that the, um, <clears throat> that it's placed evenly. I don't want it to be too close to the edge because then it's gonna be weird. So let's try it over here. Uh, okay. Let's try there. How much is that? Yeah, that's five. Let's do five. Okay. <clears throat> and then we're going to stop at the top of the pocket. So usually I put a pin up here, but I don't feel like I need to. So then we're going to measure. It's about 24, which is right about there. And then we'll move it in until it's five, right about there. And put a pin. And before you take it to the sewing machine and sew anything, We'll look at it and make sure that that's what we want. Okay, pin, oops, pin this. And bring this around. Uh, tape measure. That'll be folded under when I sew that part down. This will be folded under when I sew that part down. It is slightly long, but I think we're going to leave it that way. Because if I cut it, what can I do with a little piece? Hmm. It is kind of long. Okay, let's just cut it about here. And then both seams will be on the bottom of the bag. And you know what? 
we can put this here and then if you wanted you could hang your keys or something from there let's use a okay that'll work so now yeah that'll work okay so i'm gonna sew this down i'm gonna start here go all the way down across here down this side and at the at the top and the bottom um i'm going to do a little bit of a square and an x with the sewing machine just to give it some extra strength i will also be making sure to tuck the raw edges under and doing some extra zigzagging here on the little loop we just decided we were going to add okay let me do it i'll be back okay <clears throat> the handles are now sewn on so we have pockets on the outside, you can stuff your phone in. Now we need to make it actually into a bag because right now it's just a giant placemat with handles, which is weird. <laughs> so you're gonna turn it inside out. <clears throat> and let's see. So if we turn it, usually this is what I do. Let's see if it'll work. So usually what I would do and no, I haven't done this before, uh, this particular bag, uh, but I've been sewing a long time. Let's see. Okay, usually I do that, and then you fold this corner flat and you wanna stitch across here. And that is, I think, what we're gonna do. So we are going to fold it inside out and we're gonna sew along these side seams pretty close to the edge and sew them together and then I'm going to once it's sewn I'm going to flatten it like this and I'm going to sew across here so let me get that done and I'll be right back okay. so we got that done now what I kind of want to do which is going to be difficult to get it under the sewing machine and through all the layers is take these and just tack them down like that. These little flaps. It's like I said, it's going to be a challenge, but let me see if I can get that done and it'll just make the inside of the bag that much neater than it already is. All right, hang on. Okay. That was a pain <laughs> to get under the sewing machine presser foot, but I did. And I just zigzagged them down. So now we can turn it right side out. Oh, how cute is that? Whoops, there we go. That's adorable. I do think I'm going to stick a tag on here. I have these tags that I usually use on my um, crochet, but I've been sticking them on my bags. So let me go grab one. The next one we're going to do is the placemat bag. Uh, I did make one of these already and out of the beep, um, not placemat bag, sorry, dish drying mat bag. I made one out of the Dollar Tree drying mats they had with bumblebees on it. I'll put a picture here. Uh, we will be making one. I only found the solid blue, but I have some ideas for to jazz it up. So, but that's in a different video. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, ideas, let me know. Uh, leave something down in the comments below. I was inspired by a particular channel who's doing a lot of stuff made out of things from Dollar Tree. I'll link her channel down below. Go show her some love and um, like her channel, subscribe to her channel. If you have um, the willingness to, <laughs> you can support the free content here on YouTube. There's a bunch of stuff down in my video description, including my art foamy designs, my Patreon, and all of that stuff. 
patrons and supporters have not only a uh, Facebook Messenger chat with me, but they usually get a heads up on projects before you all do, and they have a whole private YouTube channel of their own. Anyway, check out that video description. That's it for right now. Don't forget to do something nice for yourself because you deserve it. See you in the next video. Bye, guys.